Hello and welcome to our video on using or applying, right, applying trig functions. We want to talk about how do you actually apply the three trig functions, the sine, cosine, and tangent. I should say the three main trig functions. How do we apply this in a problem or with a, a right triangle? What do we do? We always go back to our, our acronym, which is SOKOTOA. And SOKOTOA, excuse me, SOKOTOA, help us remember what uh, each function equals. So the sine function equals the opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine function equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent function equals the opposite over adjacent sides. And this really is really helpful because we're given right triangles in many of these problems and we're told that a certain angle equals something. So here, if we have our angle theta equal pi over six radians. So they're not telling us what this is in degrees. We could uh, turn this into degrees, which we went over in another video, but this would equal 30 degrees. But let's stick with the radians for a moment. If we're given this angle, and we're told that this bottom side here is 5 times the square root of 3, they might ask us, well, what's this side over here? How long is this one? What's it equal to? Well, at that point, you've got to assess the triangle and figure out which trigonometric function or which trig function would really help you. And think about the anatomy of the right triangle. This side over here is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side of the right triangle. It's the one that's across from the right angle. Notice that side doesn't really help us here. It's not a value we know or a value that we want. So we don't want to use either the sine or the cosine because those two functions use the hypotenuse. We don't need the hypotenuse or want to use it in this problem. So we're going to use tangent. Tangent, uh, we can write as tan. We're finding the tangent of pi over 6 radians. That will equal the opposite side, which is our mystery over our adjacent side, which is 5 times the square root of 3. Quick review, the adjacent side is of an angle. Well, that's one of the rays that make up the angle. So both of these sides are adjacent to the angle, but we're not picking the hypotenuse because it's already set as the hypotenuse. When they're referring to adjacent side, they're referring to not the hypotenuse. So in all of these, A does not equal the hypotenuse. That has its own special name. Even though the hypotenuse could be adjacent to our angle, we want to know the other side, right? So adjacent is not referring to the hypotenuse. And what we can do here is, I mean, at this point, you'll have a calculator or, or some kind of trig table in front of you, which will tell you what this equals, the tangent of pi over 6 in radians. And you might just want to enter the tan button and then pi over 6, which is pi divided by 6. Um, or you might use a trig table, and we might go into this a little bit further in other videos, but essentially you look this value up. Um, there are ways to derive it, measure it, understand it, but you're probably going to be looking it up. So that's what I'm going to do here. And if I look it up, the tangent of pi over 6 is exactly equal to 1 over the square root of 3, and that's going to be equal to the opposite over adjacent, so our mystery side over the adjacent side. And now I want to figure out my mystery side, so I'm going to solve this equation. An easy way to do that, or I, I think the best way for me to do that, is to multiply both sides by 5 times the square root of 3. 5 times the square root of 3 cancels out here. And now I'm going to also multiply it by this on this side. And what I have is 5 times the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3. And that equals our mystery number. But the square root of 3 divided by itself it's just 1. So our mystery side equals 5. And that's our answer. In this triangle, the mystery side is equal to 5. And that's, you know, we use a tangent there. So let's look at another example. Maybe this time we'll use a different uh, trig function. What if we had a right triangle? And this one I'll draw in red. Why not? There's a right angle. And we're given this angle up here. We're told this time that the measure of this angle is equal to the sine is equal to 60 degrees. Excuse me, I'm jumping ahead here. And as you just heard me say, we're going to use the sine here. And the reason why is um, we're given the hypotenuse. We're told the hypotenuse is 
6 times the square root of 3, and what we want to know is this leg over here. Well, the sine is great for that because, as we said before, the sine of our angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And in this triangle, since we want to know the opposite side of the angle, right, we're going to use the function that relates the opposite to our given, which is the hypotenuse. We're given the hypotenuse. So we write the sine of 60 equals our mystery side, the opposite, over 6 times the square root of 3. And again, going back to my trig tables or the calculator, the sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 time over 2. And that's going to be equal to some mystery side over the 6 times the square root of 3. And just like before, I'm going to multiply both sides now by 6 times the square root of 3. 6 square roots of 3, and these cancel out. So now we have this situation. Well, 6 and 2, we can cancel that out. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And th the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, thinking to, back to other examples, what if I have the square root of 9 times the square root of 9, well, that's going to be equal to 3 times 3, which is just 9. So the square root of anything times the square root of itself is just equal to that number. So we have 3 times 3 which equals 9, and that's our mystery side. We have a, a triangle on a tilt here. This is my right triangle. That looks a little squiggly, sorry about that. And our right angle is over here. What if they tell us that this angle is equal to 1.0472 radians? So the example before, we were given uh, a, a pi, radians in terms of pi, and in fact, this is an approximation of pi over 3 radians. So what if we're told this? And we want to know, this time, we want to know, okay, what is the hypotenuse equal? Oops. What is the hypotenuse equal to in this triangle? Hypot, hypotenuse, misspelling it. Well, it depends what side we're given, right? But but if, if we're given this side over here, and we're told that it's equal to 53, well, we want to use cosine because if we look at our acronym, SOCOTO, well, sine would, would relate this opposite side over here to the hypotenuse, but we don't have the opposite length or the hypotenuse length, so that won't help us. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, but since we don't have the opposite, we can't use that one. So cosine is the, the function we're going to use here. It relates the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And again, this angle right here the adjacent sides right here. And the hypotenuse is also adjacent, but again, when they're referring to adjacent in this in the language of trig functions, they're not referring to the hypotenuse ever, um, especially in this context of this formula. So here we want to use cosine of 1.0472. We're in radians, and that's going to be equal to our adjacent side, 53, over our mystery side, our hypotenuse. So here, um, we take, a, I think, a little bit different of an approach. But anyway, um, maybe not so much different. It just looks a little bit different than the others. The cosine of 1.0472 in radians, we should get 1 half. And that's going to be equal to 53 over something. So to figure out that something, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And that 1 half times 2 is just 1. 53 times 2 is 106 over something. So 106 divided by something is 1. Well, um, something divided by itself has to be 1. So this time, the cosine, excuse me, the angle is equal to the mystery, nah, not the angle, the mystery side is equal to 106. And that makes sense. It has to be longer than our leg. So we can use these functions in a lot of different ways. But ultimately, all we're doing uh, in these problems is finding the value of our cosine, right, on our trig table or our calculator, and then finding the appropriate fraction, and then solving for the missing variable.